Hey everybody, I'm Chili. Welcome back to 3D Fundamentals Tutorial 4. Today we're talking about perspective. Now in the last video, I kind of hinted at the idea that our, uh, our cube here that we're rendering, uh, it's not being rendered very well or very accurately, hard to say, but it looks off is what I was saying basically. And the reason why it looks off is, well, if we look at the actual code, we can get a hint here. If we go to the pube screen transformer in here, we see that the, uh, the X and the Y after the transform only depend on the X and the Y before the transform. In other words, the Z doesn't have any effect on this X and Y. And if you go back into game.cpp, you look here, this draw line function is taking vec2. So it ignores the Z component. So in effect, we are just throwing away the Z information and not considering it when we're projecting our vertices onto the screen to draw our lines. Now, the thing about the Z is, is it represents the distance uh, of a vertex from the camera or from the screen or whatever you want to call it. Uh, so by throwing away that information, we're saying that it doesn't matter how far a thing is away, we're always going to draw it the same. And that's what we're getting with our cube. It might be hard to see with our cube, but take a look at these images and you'll see the difference uh, a lot easier. So here we've got the same model being projected with perspective and orthographic projections. And in orthographic, we can see that, you know, these things are the same size and they're being drawn with the same size on the screen. Uh, but we don't know how if this thing is stubby, if it's really long, it, it looks stubby, right? But when we render it with perspective, we see it's actually like fucking long. And this part here is really far away. So it's being drawn a lot smaller than in this case here. And likewise, this, uh, this square part here is drawn a lot larger. Uh, so we can see the foreshortening, the elong elongation of the, uh, the near part, the shortening of the far part. And we get a better idea of the overall shape of the thing. Uh, whereas this orthographic projection is quite uh, misleading. Here you can see some more uh, examples of the difference between orthographic and perspective. Uh, orthographic is usually used only for things like engineering drawings, where it's useful to be able to compare the size of different parts of a component. Uh, whereas if it was in perspective, the farther away the thing was, it would look small. It'd be difficult to compare different uh, dimensions. But otherwise, we generally stick to perspective these days. So, today's 3D cue is perspective. Today's episode was brought to you by the letter Z. Uh, yeah. Basically, perspective is the idea that things farther away appear smaller. <laughs> okay, one last time. These are small, but the ones out there are far away. Now, I'm not going to insult your intelligence. I'm, I'm sure that you are familiar with this concept. But I want to talk about something you may have never thought of before, which is the origins of perspective. Why is it that things look smaller when they're far away? What is the actual physical or optical mechanism behind perspective? I think it's an interesting question to ask. It's a worthwhile question to ask. And it's just something that I, I like. It's the kind of thing I like doing. And I hope it's the kind of thing that you like doing too. Now, before we dive into how projection and perspective works, I just want to make sure we're all on the same page here. So, how does vision work? Now, I assume that some people imagine vision to work something like this. Your eye kind of emits like a cone of vision, uh, like Metal Gear Solid, right? And whatever's in that cone of vision, it senses and it sees that. Now, that's not how it works. I'm not saying that's what you believe. I'm just, just making sure, okay? So how it works is you've got a light source, right? Um, and it's going to emit photons. So it's emitting photons, tons of photons all over the goddamn place. And uh, let's focus on this one point here on this cube. So when photons hit this point, they are going to reflect off it and they're not going to reflect off in a specific angle. They're going to reflect off in all angles in a, in a wide spray. So when a photon hits somewhere, it has a basically a random chance of reflecting off in some angle. And tons of photons are hitting, so now the photons coming out of here and hitting this spot are going to shoot out 
and let me just change the color here and they're gonna shoot out like this spraying all over the place and of those photons that are reflected off this point some are going to enter the eye and that is how you will see this yellow dot photons a small amount of the photons emitted from here will hit this dot and of the photons that hit it they will spray out in a bunch of directions and a, a small amount of those will enter your eye and that is how you see and it's the same for any other spot right uh, now I mean this is mostly how light is going to be reflected but it depends I mean if you have a mirror like an actual mirror and you have photons coming off here hitting it they're all gonna rebound at the same angle that's mirror reflection that's different but for most things they just rebound off in a spray in a wide angle spray really so that's how basic light and sight works now let's get on to the topic of projection uh, what I'm gonna be doing is I'm not gonna draw three-dimensional diagrams because that's just gonna be a fucking clusterfuck what I'm gonna draw is we're gonna look at it in terms of 2d space okay so let's say we've got some small objects uh, we'll treat them like you know just uh, points but they're just small objects in space okay and we've got a uh, let's go here we've got a light source all right and let's take another color here we've got an image sensor I don't want that weird dot there there we go so we got an image sensor here now how is this gonna work how is this image sensor what is it gonna see in this setup here well let's assume the light from this light source doesn't directly hit the image sensor the light is behind the image sensor even though I didn't draw it like that never mind don't worry about it so light is gonna be spraying off from this light source in all directions some of that is going to reflect off of these dots and those reflections are going to spray out right and some of those are going to be hitting the image sensor and the same from here some of these are going to be hitting the image sensor so what does this image sensor see now let me let me let me ask you what what is the image that it sees well, imagining again, uh, if this were a 3D scene, what you would see is just a big gray blur. You wouldn't see shit. Why is that? Well, the, the reason why is quite simple. It's because all of the light from these two objects that is uh, rebounding off them and hitting the image sensor, it's, all, it's hitting all the elements of the sensor basically equally so all of the light is hitting all of the elements everything is just mixed up it's all the same this is garbage this is what you this is a completely unfocused image because we just threw out an image sensor out here but that's not how cameras see that's not how your eye sees there's something missing guess what it is it's the motherfucking lens right you need some kind of a means focus the light otherwise all the light is hitting all the elements and it's all mixing together into one gray blur all right now let's change the situation a little bit we're going to put a screen in front of our image sensor and we're going to poke a very tiny hole in the screen now what happens when we emit light from our light source light's going to hit the uh the two objects going to rebound off and the light from the two objects is going to be stopped by the screen almost all of it is going to get stopped by the screen if it hits it at all except one ray of light is going to make it through the screen and hit the image sensor and the same for this one lots of light is coming out but only one ray is going to make it through and hit the image sensor now what do you think we're going to see well like this is a 2d world projecting onto a 1d sensor but again uh let's pretend it's actually 2d sensor what does the sensor look like now it's gonna see two dots nicely formed focused image and uh, this 
This setup here is actually, it's called a pinhole camera. So you make a very tiny hole and that will allow light to only pass through that hole. So it, fo it focuses, in, in a sense, it focuses the light such that photons coming from one point in space are going to map to one specific point on your image sensor. And this mode of vision is actually how some creatures uh, work, how their eyes work. Uh, for example, the Nautilus, its eye is just a, it's just an aperture, just a small pinhole, and it works like this to see the world. All right, let's run another experiment. Let's, we got two objects here. Let's project them onto our uh, image plane here and see how that works. So, first object, we're gonna project it. So the, we're just gonna project the two ends of the object. So projecting first and through the viewing aperture, like so. And the second end, again, we'll try to get that right through the viewing aperture. So this object is going to project onto this part of the, uh, the viewing plane or the image sensor or the retina or whatever you want to call it. And here, second object, note that these two objects, they are the same size. So we're gonna project it through the focusing point onto the image plane. And we go like that and try to get it as accurate as possible. All right, and there you have it. Um, maybe you don't quite get what I'm getting at here, but these two objects are the same size, right? Now let's zoom in here onto the actual projected image plane. So this object is projecting onto this space here. And this object, same size, is projecting onto this space here. We can see that the projected space is much smaller for the far away object than it is for the close by object. And there is the relationship. There is where perspective comes from. Uh, it's just these angles passing through the focusing point. And if you're farther away, your angles are going to be much narrower and you're going to uh, project onto a smaller area on the image sensor. Whereas if you're close by, you're going to get nice wide projection. And that's the basis for perspective. And that's why things that are farther away appear smaller. Now one thing that is kind of important to note about a system like this is look at it as if this is you. You're looking forward. So on your right is this object here. But where is it actually being projected onto the image sensor, onto your retina? It's being projected onto the left side of your retina. So things on your right actually appear on the left part of the image sensor and vice versa. It gets mirror imaged. And this is how your eyes work as well. So if you just look to your left and then gently touch the, uh, the right corner of your right eye, just massage it a little bit, you should see a dot appear, just a dark dot. And that dot is going to appear in the left side of your vision. Uh, so even though you're touching the right side of your eye, you're basically manually stimulating the right side of your retina. It, appear, it forms an image on the left side of your vision. Now the thing is, is in computer graphics, we don't want things on the right to appear on the left side of our monitor. We want right things on the right to appear on the right side. Uh, and the, the, the fix for that is pretty simple. All you have to do mathematically is move the image plane so that instead of being behind the focal point, it is in front of the focal point. And if you do that, you'll see that the projected lines, they have the same, I mean, I didn't do it perfect, I didn't measure it perfect, but they basically have the same width here. They take up the same spot, but now they're on the right side of, they're on the proper side of the image sensor. So things on the right will appear on the right, things on the left will appear on the left with their proper size. Now, physically, this makes no goddamn sense because the whole idea of the aperture was that things that the uh, image sensor is behind the aperture and now only light passes through uh, one pinhole. Uh, if you put it before the aperture, obviously all the light is going to hit all the parts, but that's just physical. Mathematically, mathematically speaking, if you put the image plane before the, 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 uh, the focusing point, 
it all works out. Now there's only one problem left, and that is how do we calculate a point on our image plane given a point in uh, object space? So, uh, well, let's just make some definitions for our world here. And we're going to say that this is the x-axis direction here. This is the x direction, and this is the z direction. So positive z, positive x. Now, so again, this is our focal plane. This is our focal point, and it's at 0, 0. Here is our image plane, which is uh, exactly one unit away from the focal plane in the z. So this would be z equal to 1. This is z equal to 0. All right, so say we're projecting this object onto our image plane. So let's get to the points of our vertices, because that's what we're going to be using to project in our game engine. So this one is going to be 0, 0, right? Z, and x is 0, z is 0. Uh, now our image plane, this point on our image plane is going to be what? It's going to be x0, z1, so 0, 1. Uh, let's look at the uh, our object. Now I put the object, again, one away from the image plane, so this one is going to be 0, 2. And I don't know, I mean, I don't know how many units I made it up here, um, because I didn't measure it properly. But just eyeballing it, I'm going to say this is about 0 0.6. It's not quite as long as this distance here, so... 0 0.6 and again 2. So this point here, what is it? Well, I'm going to tell you it is exactly half of this. So this one is going to be 0 0.3 and 1. Now how can I say that? Well, let's just blow it up here. You got what you have here is two similar triangles. You have the big one and then you have the small one inside. So if this length is half of this length, or if this, this length is twice this length, this length is also going to be twice this one. I mean, I didn't draw it too well, so it doesn't look quite like twice, but trust me, if you double, if you have two similar triangles like this, and this one is twice as much as this one, then this one is going to be twice as much as this one, and that's what we have here. So here, this is twice as much, so that means that this one must be twice as much. Let's write that out in an expression, shall we? So let's work backwards here. Given a point x prime on the image plane here, if we know the point x prime and we know the distance of the object, or its z, we can calculate what the position x is. So let's say our z is here, whatever this is. This is our x prime. So following this line here from the focus point to x prime, we know that the, uh, the original point in object space would have been here. And as the z gets larger, if you double the z, so double this z now, now this point here, this x coordinate is going to be twice as much. So working that into a formula, we know that x prime times z is equal to x, right? If you increase z, x will also increase for the same x prime on the image plane. But we're not trying to calculate coordinates in object space given our image space. We have the coordinates in object space, and we want to figure out what they are on our image plane. So all we got to do is rearrange this equation. We'll divide by z here, so x prime is equal to x in object space divided by z in object space. And that's how you get projection. That's as simple as it is. And the farther an object away is, the larger z is going to be, right? And the larger z is, the more you divide, the smaller your object is going to be in your uh, image space, like this same size in object space, but farther away in the Z, so projects onto a smaller space in image space. And that's all the math required to be able to project with perspective. Just divide by Z. That's it. It's that easy. Uh, now this is assuming, of course, that the image plane 
is exactly one unit away from the fo focal point. If you move this, if you make it closer to the focal point, uh, you're going to have to adjust this a little bit. But in our system, we're just going to make the image plane one unit away from the focal point. And another thing to be careful of is as objects approach the, uh, the plane of focus, they're going to be projecting, uh, you know, into larger and larger positions in image, image space. So as you get closer and closer, the projection gets larger because you're dividing by Z. So as Z approaches zero, uh, X is going to approach infinity. So you cannot allow objects to touch the, uh, the focus plane. And if an object goes behind the focal plane, it's actually now going to cross onto the opposite side of the image plane. So you don't want that. And that's where clipping is going to come in. You want to clip objects at some point before the, uh, the focal plane, but we won't, we'll deal with clipping later. We don't worry about it. One more thing I almost forgot is, uh, with regards to what points or what vertices will be visible on the screen, in our old system with the uh, orthographic projection, it was basically just x and also y, uh, absolute value of x or y less than or equal to 1. So any x or y between 1 and negative 1 would be falling within the screen. But if it were higher or lower, it would be outside of the screen. But now we have the perspective divide. So the relationship is a little different. And basically, the points that will be within the screen have to satisfy this relationship here. So, for example, x divided by z uh, less than or equal to 1, uh, absolute value. And the same for y. And so now the visibility of a vertex uh, depends not only on just uh, its x and y values, but also depends on its z values together with those. Just something to keep in mind. So yeah, this is all you need to do perspective. You don't need... Some of you may have seen the projection matrix, right? And that does a whole bunch of shit. Uh, and we will talk, we will cover it. It's useful and you need it to be able to do direct 3D, but it's not essential to 3D graphics. There's nothing about 3D graphics that requires the projection matrix. It's just a useful construct. And all you really need to have uh, projection with perspective is just to do the, uh, the Z divide, the depth divide. As long as you do that, the perspective divide, um, you will get perspective. So this was the case for 2D to 1D projection. And uh, for 3D to 2D, this is basically the same idea. You just divide X by Z to get X prime, and you divide Y by Z to get Y prime. It's the same idea, really. No biggie. All right, let's take a look at the code now, shall we? Uh, I've created a branch at this commit here, so we'll switch to ST4A switch to that branch and uh, let's take a look. Well, actually, let's take a look at the changes here. So I only made one change and that was to pube screen transformer. And it's quite simple here. So let's see if I can get some more space here to view. Um, I guess that's a little better. All right, so what are we doing here? Well, before, we were transforming from uh, pube space into screen space, and we're still doing that, but now we're going to divide, divide by Z. So, first what I do is I calculate the inverse of Z, because I don't want to be dividing twice. So I calculate the inverse once, and then I multiply that inverse by uh, X and by Y here. So this is essentially dividing by Z, and we divide by Z first, and then we apply the, uh, the screen transformation afterwards, which is important. If we were to uh, multiply this Z inverse at the very end here, we would get a very different result and it would not be a good one. So make sure you apply the, uh, the perspective division first and then transform those points from uh, whatever space to screen space. Now, if we try to run this, we get a problem, assertion failed, y is less than height. So this is basically uh, drawing off the screen, right? And the reason for that is, so basically we're creating our one by one cube at the origin, and then we're shifting it over by one unit in the z direction here. So it's going to be around here, basically inside our image plane. 
And then when we project this, when we project the near edge of our cube, it's projected outside of the image plane. So the, the solution to this problem, of course, is to move the, uh, the cube farther away from the, the, plane, the point of focus to make it smaller in the image plane so that it does not go outside of the, uh, the screen, basically. And later on, we'll be doing clipping and stuff like that, but not right now. So right now, let's just move this fucker farther away, which is what we do in the next change. So in this commit here, I uh, feel a little poke coming through too close. Now, girl, I know you felt it, but boy, you know I can't help it. You know what I want to do. We check it out here. All we do is we uh, change this uh, translation from 1 in the Z to 2 in the Z. So we're pushing it a little farther away from the point of focus. And that will keep it uh, within the screen when we project it. Uh, then here, I've added a little more spice. Uh, in game.cpp, I added another variable, offset Z. And let me see here. So R and F now control the Z offset. So you can move the cube in the, uh, the Z direction. So, without further ado, let's, uh, let's play this fucker. So here we have our cube, and right away you notice something different. Now, the, uh, you can see the back side and the front side right when it's facing you. Because of course, with perspective, the farther away face is going to be smaller than the closer one. And if you rotate it, now you can see you get that 3D perspective effect. Very nice. And if I press R and F, I can push the cube farther away in the Z and pull it in closer. And if we pull it in very close, there we go, we get assertion failed while less than height down here, this vertex went outside of the window there. But yeah, that's, that's, there she is. That's all there is to getting 3D perspective projection. It just boils down to divide by Z. That's all it is. But I figured the uh, the actual physics behind it, the optics behind it, was quite interesting. So uh, I decided to take you guys on that little journey. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you have any questions or if you have any comments or anything, feel free to you know leave comments or grab me on the forum or on the Discord, and we can chat about 3D shit. Either way, thanks for watching. Uh, if you did like the video, please click the like button. It helps a lot, and it also helps me to figure out where I want to, you know, allocate my time for making tutorials. Either way, I will see you soon with some more 3D fundamentals. <laughs>